program, a literacy program to encourage literacy in our community. So I'm really honored to be a part of that. And you know, even though my book is a cookbook, you still have to read and, and then cook, so it, it's fun. So uh, basically, I always liked to cook for fun growing up, um, but I never really you know, cooked every day. It was just something like a hobby I did for fun. Like I told my mom, let's go buy a walk. I would make some fancy Chinese food or some elaborate <coughs> Indian dish. But after going to school and undergrad and grad school, and then I was working and coming home late, and I noticed that you know I was getting takeout or I was getting you know frozen foods, it just wasn't healthy. And I like to cook for fun, but when I came home on, after a long day, I didn't want to just cook something. You know, I wanted to have food there because I was hungry. So then I I thought you know I like all of these, but I saw my mom. My mom, she's a working professional. She's a dietitian, and she raised. My, my brother and and me and and so like we would always have you know dinner like all four of us my dad and my mom and my brother and me would always come home after a long day and my mom would have dinner ready mm -hmm. so I asked her okay well show me your tell me your recipes and I would call her over and over I had really bad handwriting so I would scribble it down and she said didn't you already ask me that I said I did so then I thought you know what I'm, I'm gonna neatly type them I'm gonna keep them as a memory for me and to pass on. And so I was collecting all of her recipes. The hardest thing though was in Indian cooking, she'll just say, okay, we'll just put in some salt, put in some pepper, put in some cayenne, put in some turmeric, you know, stop, what does stop mean? So standardizing that was the hardest part. So I made her actually, I would go to her house where she would come and I would like, mom, here are some measuring spoons I bought. Cause she doesn't have measuring spoons in her house. I'm like, can you please use this? And she's still like, she's like, she would like take it from her hand or her spoon and then we would put it in my measuring spoon to see how much it actually was because hers is more visual. So that took a long time, but that was the whole thing because just saying a little bit of this, a pinch of that, a pinch of this doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. And then I did all of that with my mother-in-law too. They live in Atlanta, my in-laws do, but they're from a different part of India. They're from the southern part of India. And my parents are from the northern part, Punjab. And I'll talk about how the food is different in the different regions. So uh, every time they would come to visit, the two years that I was working on the book, she, my mother-in-law would be working all, you know, and then we would be in the kitchen from morning till night, doing dishes and cooking and recipes. And finally one time she said she's not gonna come visit me anymore because <laughs> she was like, this is just too much work. <laughs> it, it was a lot of work when you're writing the book, but I just wanted to make sure that everything was answered. You know, like it was for the beginner cook, it was like a how to boil a potato, how to boil an egg. Every question that I ever had was answered in there. You know, just um, boiling water. How, you know, how do you do that to make tea? That, that's all answered. Everything is baby step by step. And so I collected about a hundred recipes. So I was saying um, Punjab is in the northern part of India, and in the front of a book is a map that tells you know where my family is originally from, where my in-laws are from. The northern part, um, their cuisine is more. Uh, bread, then it's a little bit more, um, they have a little bit more meats in their dishes, and they have a little bit more richer foods, whereas the southern part, their basic is rice, and they have a lot of spicy, a lot of fiery spicy, uh, more seafood, more coconut-based foods. So I have a mixture of all these. And if you like Indian food, you must, you know, you may have heard of chicken tikka masala and saag paneer. Those are restaurant favorites that are not everyday home you know, they're not served every day. They have cream poured in them. So, and and chicken tikka masala, it is, you know, it's just not a 30 minute dish. It takes, it's a two part dish. But because everybody wants that in naan, naan is the Indian bread, I did, I figured out how to make those recipes and I put them in the book. And bindaloo, which is the spiciest of Indian recipes. So uh, naan, the reason, you know, when people think of Indian food, they think of naan bread. But that's not our everyday bread because you need a special tandoor, which and a tandoor is a special oven. It's like a clay pit almost, and it almost imagine a bucket that's made out of clay and it's coal fired or, or wood fired. And after you make the dough and slap it, you put it on the inside wall. So the reason why you don't really like my grandmother actually has that in her home in India, in her outside veranda, and in America restaurants have professional grade tandoors, but. The home cook doesn't have it here in America. And even in India, people don't make naans every day from home. But um, the reason why you can't do that, you can't get the exact duplicate by making it our home oven, is because our home oven only goes up to maybe 500, 550 degrees, where a tandoor goes up to 900 or something. And that high heat is what gives you the different textures.
texture of the bread or the way the meat or the seafood tastes. So I try to get as close as I can to the tandoori, you know, doing easy one and not. And so I hope you like that recipe. And um, my recipes are about 100 recipes in the book. <coughs> Almost all of them except five have uh, pictures. And the reason why those five don't is because I wanted to make sure the picture is going to look like exactly what you think. You know, when the recipe says that's what it's going to look like. It's not doctored. It's, it's really what it's going to look like. And um, we had an award-winning photographer, uh, a James Beard Award. That's the, one of the most highest awards you can get in the publishing industry. So he was hired to take all the photographs. So only five of them. It, it, it looked nice, but it was just the way they plated it. It was a little deceiving. So those are the only ones that I didn't have. But um, even some of the more trickier ones, like samosas, I have step-by-step -step pictures on how to and bread, how to fold them, how to roll them, all of that. So the recipes range from um, from the basics, like how to make yogurt at home. Every Indian has yogurt in their home, in their refrigerator. And we don't use any kind of special tool or anything. Just all you need is a pot to boil milk in, and that's it. Okay, that's all you need. You don't need any kind of special refrigerator device or anything. And I have yogurt, I have retha. Retha is like, yeah, there's actually retha back there today. It's yogurt. It's a white one, and then you um, thin it down just a bit with a little bit of water, and then you beat it with a whisk or a spoon, and you put a little bit of salt, pepper, maybe some um, ground cumin seeds, and you can put you can put tomatoes, cucumbers, onions. So that I have that in there, and I have um, chutneys in there. So back there, there's a green and a black. The green one is mint chutney, and I have a fresh mint and uh, onion chutney in my book very easy to make, and I also have a tamarind chutney, that's what the black one is. And the, they're being served with papadam, the wafers, those are um, lentil wafers. So those you can get from like uh, your local grocery store, Central Market, Whole Foods, Kroger, and they're just wafers that they're lentils um, that have been cooked, boiled, and ground up, and then baked, like dried out in circles and rolled, uh, rolled and dried out, and bake in the sun. And that's what you buy. And then you stick them in the microwave or make them on your gas flame for 30 seconds and they get crispy. That's what it is. So those are nice chips. Like when you go to a Mexican restaurant, you munch on tortilla chips. Here you can munch on papadam. Yeah. And so my basics, so, so my basics chapters have all the basics chutney, like mango chutney, ginger chutney, coconut chutney is one of my favorites. And then I have appetizers. So I have appetizers. Um, one of the most easiest ones, my mom, she made for all the parties, is fruit salad. It's called fruit chat. And what it is is people don't expect it when you eat it. They expect it's going to be just sweet fruit. It's fruit that's topped with lime juice and a little bit of cayenne and salt and pepper. So when you're eating the fruit, you get this kick, this tangy and spicy kick. It's very interesting. And actually what I do is, like, for all the recipes, I don't really eat a lot of spicy food. But because um, the northern part of India doesn't have spicy food, it's more richer, creamier. The southern part is very spicy. So I just kind of leave out the cayenne a bit. That, that's what causes the heat. So anytime you see cayenne, or if you see red chilies or green chilies, and if you don't like it spicy, cut that back. If you like it spicy, feel free to add more. So my husband's family is from the southern part. They love spicy. Like he thinks I'm a whip. But I just, I, I can't eat it. And my baby surprisingly likes, she likes spicy food. She, some of you may have seen her. She's 22 months, 21 months. And, um, but what I still do is when I, she eats all the food that we eat, and I just like uh, put in a pinch of cayenne. So, and all the other spices are not fiery hot. You can use flavor, like cinnamon or cardamom, cumin seeds, mustard seeds. And any cooking you uses black mustard seeds not the yellow mustard seeds. Yellow mustard seeds are like the American mustard seeds that you have American mustard. The black ones are a little bit more, a uh, little bit more uh, intense, a little more flavor. Like uh, you know, grape coupon, that they're made from like the, the, the black mustard seeds, the, the, like the European mustard. So I also um, teach in the basics chapter how to make paneer. Paneer is a homemade Indian cheese. And it's very easy. All you do is take milk and you boil it. And then when it comes to a rolling boil, you add in some lime juice or lemon juice. And anytime I say limes in the book, if you have lemons instead, no problem. Just use lemon instead of lime. And when you put in that lime juice, what's going to happen is the milk is going to start separating into
curves and whey. So curves is a thick part, and then whey is, you, curves will be like clumpy white stuff, and then the whey is going to be like this clear liquid that's left over. And that whey is, it's, because I use my ears, it'll have a little greenish tinge to it. And then I just drain it through a, a cheesecloth. If you don't have a cheesecloth, like one time, um, my husband, like I just did laundry, and he had an older um, undershirt. It was clean, so I just cut that up, and it was perfect, you know? So you just want something that you can just drain the water from. And so that's, and then that, when you have that, um, when, once you drain it, you can like press it together with your hand, form a block, right, like a square, and then put a heavy pot on top of it so all the other water squeezes out. And then you get this cube, this square, and then you cut it into cubes. And you can pan fry it, you can saute it, and you might have heard of sab paneer. Sab is spinach and paneer, well actually sab is, is, um, is um, mustard green. And, um, it's, and it's really, the, technically the right name is pollock paneer, so you might have also seen it as pollock paneer. And, uh, but sab is a mixture of beans also. So it's spinach with cheese cubes inside, and those pan fried cheese cubes are how you make it. And I was actually surprised to learn that from like the cheese, you, there are so many desserts that you can make from the cheese. Like in the, I have desserts, um, rascola, which is like little brown white cheese balls that are like they float in a nice sugary syrup, and that's one of my favorites. And I didn't realize they were cheese balls. So you're just, I'm just popping in these things with your cheese. And then there's, I'm sorry, is that my baby crying? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
because if you go to the store to buy this stuff, it really becomes right. And all of my, one thing about my recipes is that all of the ingredients, almost 99.9 .9 of them you can get at your local grocery store. You do not have to go to an ethnic market. But in the back of the book, I do have like um, the different cities in America and Canada if you want to go to an ethnic market to buy some of the things, the ingredients. Like I go to Indian grocers on 59 and, um, 59 and Hill Cross. Uh, if you want to go there for like a better value, you can get a better value. And also, they have, if you can't find all of these lentils at your local store, you can find them. But I know for sure that you can get the, the red ones, this is the red and the orange. And um, I was surprised to find, uh, when I was making a book, Papadam is one of those crunchy lentil wafers that we were talking about earlier that are back there. Those are, uh, I've seen them at Central Market, I've seen the Whole Foods, I've seen them at Kroger. So you just buy it and put it in the microwave. And, uh, this was paneer, I was talking about paneer into the cheese. When you drain it, it looks like this. And then you press it into a block, and it looks like that. And then you cube it up, and you can fry it. Um, and then samosas, let's talk about samosas. Samosas are those um, pea and potato turnovers that, you know, that are back there, right here. And so what they are is dough, you make the dough, you knead the dough, and you roll it into a circle, and then you cut the circle in half, and you form it into a cone and stuff it with your pea and potato stuffing, and you deep fry it. Now, making the dough from scratch and working with that is a lot of hard work. No Indian makes the most of us, but not that I know of. So it makes the most of the home because you're readily available at the store in India or at every corner, you know, just freshly fried samosas. But um, what I did is my mom taught me how to make them from Mexican tortillas. And I actually made them on a great day used to when Deborah Duncan, she was making them with me. So um, it's so easy. I have the recipe to make it from scratch. If you want to make it from scratch for some reason, you can do it. The dough. But the Mexican tortillas, you just buy the white Mexican tortillas and you keep them in your microwave for 10 seconds so that they'll become flexible so they won't break when you fold them. And also so the glue will stick. And the glue is just flour and water, no eggs or anything like that. And so you just form it into a cone. The only thing you have to do is work fast so it doesn't cool down. And you just assemble them. And what I do is, and I talk about it, a tip here too, I assemble them and I stick a whole bunch in my freezer. And what I do is, that way, like, if I know I have all these assembled samosas in my freezer, I'll put them in a little container or a sandwich bag. And if I know that I'm going to have a party or if I want to have 10 samosas fried up on a certain day, in the morning, I'll take them out of the freezer and I'll put them in the, in the fridge and they'll thaw and then they'll be just be at room temperature and then I'll put them at room temperature and then fry them up. It's so easy because they take best freshly fried or at least, like, you know, two, three hours within frying. So if you're having a party, I would like, I would definitely assemble them a few days before, put them in the fridge, put them in the freezer. You can even leave them in the fridge for three days before frying them. If it's more than three days, put it in the freezer. And then I would fry them up like maybe two hours, three hours before the party, and just put them in a pan, like, you know, like that's right there. Or even your serving platter and cover it with foil and stick it in a warm oven at 200 degrees so it stays hot, but it's not going to become soggy. You know, it'll still be crisp. And if you don't want to eat peas and potatoes inside, I have another recipe. You can do a variation. You can put lamb samosas. You can put ground lamb and peas inside, too, if you want to have a, a, a neat version of it. So I'll show you the ground lamb, what that looks like. Right here. This mixture right here.
it's it's not bad actually though. I, I you know I did a lot of research to figure out how to make it. It's a lentil soup. It's made with the sweet lentils that were split in shells that are yellow, and it's creamy. And basically, it has you know that's why it's a restaurant dish because it has that heavy cream in there. But it's really nice like on a cold day just to have it. And I put some peas and potatoes in there. It's a very party soup. It's nice to have. It's very surprisingly easy to make. It, it's not. There's no intense flavors. It's just like a creamy lentil soup. So, you know, when, it, when the fall comes around, this would be a nice thing to serve. Maybe even like a Thanksgiving or something. Do that. This was that spiced tomato soup that I was talking about. And let's see what else. Here, you know, black eyed peas. What do you guys know? Black eyed peas. So, black eyed peas, kidney beans, and garbanzo beans, you can use the dried, you know, the dried ones. And uh, instead of the canned ones that are already cooked. So you could use a dried one, soak them in water the night before, and then the next day you boil them for about 45 minutes to an hour so they're cooked. So they're not, and, and then you put them in a spice base. The easiest way to do it when you're doing all that is buy the canned ones, you know? And all you do is, I mean, I was just surprised when I saw how easy it was. After you make this, the base, which is uh, onions and tomatoes with some spice, basic spices, just dump, dump in the can with the water. You don't want to throw that water away. Some people say you have to rinse the beans because you don't want to throw that away because that's the broth that the beans will be cooked in. So that <coughs> has to do it. And that's why even if I'm making it from the hard beans, when I'm boiling it, I'm not throwing that water away. I'm going to use that water for the dish. But sometimes people are worried that there's preservatives or stuff in that can and they want to rinse it. You can buy organic ones. So like there's some organic brands. So, I do that and I feel good about it and it's easy. I wanted to talk about the spices. I use, my mom, she only uses salt and pepper, <coughs> black pepper, I'm sure almost everybody has that, just regular salt. And she uses cayenne. Cayenne is, is the red pepper, the spicy one. So you know those small little red chilies, any green <coughs> chili pepper, if you leave it on the plant long enough, it turns red. When it turns red, they pluck it, they dry it in the sun and they crush it. So if you order pizza, you get those red pepper flakes. That's not crushed, that's chopped up or ground up. But if you further grind that up, that's what the cayenne is. So cayenne pepper, in India it's made from, we use like the Thai chili peppers, but if you can't find that, like if I'm at Kroger or something, I'll just use, um, I'll just use jalapeno peppers or serrano peppers, whatever is, is available there. So, and turmeric, she uses turmeric. Turmeric, some people say turmeric, Turmeric, I think turmeric. That is yellow, bright yellow. And that has a lot of antiseptic properties. It's good for you. And that is made from, um, you know, does everyone know how ginger looks like? Ginger is a root. It's the same family, except it's orangey in color. It's just a root like that. And they take it, they pluck, they take it from the ground, they dry it in the sun, and they grind it into the turmeric powder. That was used um, in uh, dyes. It's because it'll stain your fingers. If you ever use it, wash your hands right away. It, it'll stain your fingers. And they use it as dye. And also, uh, in India, like they have, um, they use it as like a beauty product, like for your face, like you know, some kind of cream, or they mix it with a paint. And it's like a herbal beauty cream. So it, it's supposed to do wonders to your face. I wanted to show you what it looks like. If you go to the Indian grocery store, they have some of those turmeric tubes. Sorry, I just wanted to show you guys a picture of turmeric. So this right here is the root. So see, it looks like ginger, and um, but it's not. It's, it's brighter than ginger. And then you have it when dried and ground up, you get that. So my mom uses salt, black pepper, cayenne, turmeric and cumin seeds. So here's the five things that she has in her spice box. And she does the most basic cooking. So when you see a lot of the recipes that have just those five things, those are going to be my mom's recipes. If she wants to get fancy, she'll add in cardamom. Like she'll do a cardamom chicken. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, she likes to use more spices, like black mustard seeds. And she likes to use garam masala. You might have heard of garam masala. Garam masala is a mixture of warm spices like cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, and cumin seeds, and coriander seeds, and they're roasted when you dry. Garam gar means warm in Hindi. Masala means spices. So you dry roast them, and you grind them up, and it smells so good. And you just dump that in everything. So I 
have a recipe on how to make garam masala. You can buy it at the store. The only thing is when you buy it, you don't know how long it's been sitting on the shelf, so it might lose its potency. It, spices are usually good like three to six months. And then they, I mean, it's not that it's gonna go bad, it's just not gonna be as strong. It won't smell that good. And let me show you what garam masala. So you can buy, you can see it right here? It's ground up, it's like a, it's like a dry, uh, just, so it has coriander leaves, cloves, cardamoms, cumin seeds, black pepper, corn, and cinnamon stick. And when you smell it, it's amazing. And then, so my mother, so any, every dish that has garam masala in there, it is uh, my mother-in-law's dish, except the kidney beans dish. Because my, my mom actually told me that her mother used to use garam masala in everything. But when my mom came to America, she was like, she's not going to mess with that. So she just cut that out of her cooking. <laughs> she didn't buy it from the store. Uh, but you can definitely buy it. It's like I, I have other things in there, like the rest of the tomato soup I was talking about, and sambar, which is a split fish and pea stew. You can buy these, and I make the note in every hand note. You can buy it from the store if you want to. But sometimes, you know, different brands have different flavors. You don't know how old it is, so you can make it and and just keep it. Um, and then, see what else? And if anyone has any questions in between while I'm talking, feel free to just. Yeah. <laughs> you like, yeah. Yeah, I I want to get the advantage of the fragrance of okay. the garam masala. Yeah. So do you do you roast those together before you brine them or do you roast do you brine them up and then roast them? No, first you roast them. First you roast them. Yes, yeah, first you roast the whole time. And then you brine them up. And I brine them up in a little like a little coffee right here. So I have one just for that. I, I don't drink coffee. I know people say, like, you two separate ones. Like, you know, this little one like that? I just have one like that, and I grind it up in there. And it works. It, it just comes out really good. And, and that's the, now, that one doesn't have the cardamom, right? Yes, it does. It it does. Do you take it out of the... No, you don't have to take it out of the pot. So you leave it in the okay. Yeah, you just roast it. Grind it all up. Uh-huh, and grind it all up. And when you smell it, it's just, I love smelling it. It smells so good. And then uh, you can put it in that, you know, the lamb, the ground lamb and peas, for the samosa. I have fish curries to put it in. I have shrimp curries I put it in. Chicken curries. Like, oh, I want to talk about curries, the word curry, because I have a little pet peeve about that. Uh, I wrote about it in the book, too. So when people say, oh, I want to eat curry, or I like Indian food, I mean, I, I haven't asked somebody, what does curry mean? When they say, what, does anyone use it like that? Like, does anyone say, I like curry? Does anyone here like curry? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what does curry mean to you? It's a spice. It's a spice. It's a spice. Right. Okay. What kind right. of spice? A curry spice. What <laughs> <laughs> Any different spices so we can make the curry. So it depends on who's putting them together. What you put it like? Coriander. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. I think it's a saucy dish. Okay. 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 The winner is you. The saucy dish. Yeah. Is it? Powder because a curry powder is a mixture. 
mixture of um, spices. But the best thing, instead of confusing everybody, don't buy a curry powder. Okay, don't ever talk about curry powder. <laughs> so, and the, the way I use the word curry is anything, like you said, and like you said, a curry is a gravy dish. It's that base, okay? It's that, it's that, um, it's that liquid that you see. Whether it's a saucy curry, a thick liquid, or a really thin, soupy curry. I, um, <coughs> in this book, I did not, and I feel bad about this, the picture for chicken curry, there is no picture for chicken curry because the way that they, when, when they take the picture, see it, so when you take the when you make a chicken curry, all you're gonna see is liquid on top. You're not gonna see the chicken pieces inside because you see all this curry. But they can't take a picture like that for the book because then when you're looking at the book, all you're gonna see is the top layer. You're gonna wonder what's inside of it. That's, so when they plated the chicken curry, they just plated the pieces and they put so little, you couldn't even see the curry part. I'm like, no, it looked like a dry dish. But a similar one is lamb curry. So you see how you, um, you see that liquid part, right? And they plated it a little bit, you know, just so you could see what's in there. You can see that in there. So um, another curry dish is this pea and potato curry. And, and they pile it so you can see it more. But the, on the back of it, uh, pea and potato curry, it's a saucy curry. And uh, I talk about it in my book that you can have it really thin or you can keep cooking it and cooking it until the water goes, cooks off more and more and more and becomes I feel, oh, that's my husband back there. He came to pick the baby up. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so um, oh yeah, curry. So my mom was telling me that her grand, her mother, if when my mom would go to school, she would make this dish and cook off all the water and pack it for her lunch, so it wouldn't spill around her lunch. It would be like a dry sauteed food dish. But when guests would come over, she would put a lot of water so you know it could spread out more you know so, so that's how that's what a curry is a curry is any dish that has a some kind of wet base to it okay and i know lentils are not called curry so lentils and legumes will be a different chapter but everything else is a curry so i'm going to test you guys i'm going to ask you based on these pictures for example Is this a curry? Green beans and potatoes. Why? Why is it a curry? From here, we can put some gravy on the bottom. No. Okay, well, it's far away, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. This is a completely dry sauteed dish. Actually, I had a few friends that make in, for Thanksgiving, instead of making green bean casserole, they serve this instead. You know, it's a different twist. Is this a curry? This potato dish. There's not sauce in the bottom. I know, that's a fair question because of the way it's yes. going No, it's not a curry. Is this a curry right here? Yes. Yes, that's a potato curry because you see the liquid in there. Okay. And this is also a curry, it's hard to tell, but this is a saucy curry. That's the one that I was talking about on the back of the book right there. Okay. And um, so let's talk about, oh, and this is sauce in here. Remember we were talking about spinach and cheese cubes? So I wanted to talk a little bit about desserts because that's my favorite chapter. Mm. I'm a sweet tooth, and as you can probably tell, my baby has a sweet tooth too. She was downing that mango. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, before we leave the topic of curry, sure. um, so as we know it, uh -huh. curry. Uh -huh. When we request curry, or we think of curry, or our, our minds go to curry. Uh -huh. What is the main ingredient in the spice that that appeals to us? I mean, we say we like curry. So whether it's a gravy or, or consists of some some spice. I think it's cumin seeds because cumin seeds are common in everything. And some people say they hate curry. Maybe if they hate it, it has a fenugreek in there also. So that's the one that really stands out. <coughs> but I because I don't use that, and I think because all other Indian dishes that don't have it. I think it's, the, it's that cumin seeds. When you cook them in oil or when you dry roast them, it really gives a, a, you know, a unique flavor to it. So I, that, that and mainly with fenugreek. That's why some people think, oh, hey, they were repulsed by it. And I can understand because it's fenugreek. But what, are you familiar with like curries or? Well, I'm just, you know, as, as we know 
to a restaurant and we say we want a curry dish. Uh -huh. um, I, I haven't really associated it with the gravy, but I will from now on. Okay. Um, so that I'm <laughs> I fit in. Uh, but if there's a flavor there, I, I'm uncertain that it's cumin because I'm from Spain. So okay. I cook, you know, I cook cumin. with cumin. Right. You know, I make Spanish rice and all of this stuff. So it's something different in there. It, it's probably better be, but okay. all the different dishes that you taste. Are you, are you tasting the same thing in each one? Or yes, there is a familiar curry flavor, isn't there? In each one? Yes. The, the, the familiar thing, honestly, I use cumin in almost everything. So I'm interested, when you try some of my recipes, email me and tell me like if that's a okay. flavor that you, you know, that's a good question. I want to see what it is. But that Could be the turmeric? Turmeric, turmeric if you, it's a very mild, it doesn't have a lot of taste okay. to it, but if you put a whole bunch in there, it's going to make it bitter. And it'll make your dish bitter. So maybe it's the fenugreek. Fenugreek, fen 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 yeah. Um, I was going to say something else about your question. Well, it comes back to me, I'll bring it up. Um, but uh, on dessert, I, I, want, I wanted to say something about the curry. Um, oh, yeah, I was in New York, and there were some people, I think they were from um, New England, from England from, um, they were British, and they were like, Let's, we're going to go eat curry tonight. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> gosh, you know what? Because in in um, over there in England, they do say curry. They refer to all Indian food as curry. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So yes, yes. <laughs> we won't make them say. So like chicken tikka masala, that if you've heard of that, that is a curry because it has that crazy base to it. Yeah. I, I do have it in this book because that was you know one of the everyone. I I love chicken tikka masala. It's beautiful. Cream is what it is. <laughs> it's like heavy cream. <laughs> um, and so dessert. So the mango lassi is um, a lassi is a yogurt-based drink. So I have a salted lassi and a sweet lassi. This is yogurt that's eaten, and you put water and salt. In it. So it's into you know not everybody will like that, but actually this is a very popular dish also in Turkey. They call it ayran. And then you can, you can go to Turkish restaurants here, or Middle Eastern restaurants, you can order that. And then I have a sweet flavor. So you're, um, instead of putting salt, you put sugar in there, so it's a sugary drink. And mango lassi is because it's a yogurt. It's fresh mangoes, yogurt, and um, ice and water, and sugar. So sugar is the only bad thing in there, but it's like a dessert beverage. And if, you're, like, if you don't like something too sweet, you can cut the sugar back. If your mango happens to be so nice and sweet, you might not even need the sugar in there. One time I had a party, and um, instead of putting as much water in there, I put rum in there instead, and I had a bunch. People were going to taste it, and they were having such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be a nice cocktail. You know, the holidays are coming up. It's a nice, interesting, you're having a cocktail party. It's going to be a pretty glass. So. It's different, you know, and it's so easy when if, um, I didn't write this in the, well, I did write it in the book. I talked about, um, you know, when you go to the restaurant, like this one right here, there'll be a small difference between that and this. The difference is they're not using fresh mangoes, and this is made with fresh mangoes. That means, like, if you go to, I haven't seen this at an American store yet. Sometimes at Fiesta they might have it, but it's a can of mango pulp. Okay. And what they've done is they've cut the mangoes, you know, curate that pulp, and they've already put the sugar in there and canned it up. So all you need to do is add the yogurt and the water and the ice. And it, it's like a very fine consistency. Sometimes if you're using a fresh mango, it's very fibrous. Depending on how strong your blender is, you might see a little bit more texture in there than this. That's the difference between this recipe and that. Uh, if you're having a party, honestly, to tell you the truth, if I'm having a party, and I learned it the hard way because I, I was doing fresh mangoes, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is taking a long time. I use cans of mango pulp. You know? And you just play with it a little bit. You know, start with these. Um, these measurements right here, and um, the just the sugar is really the only thing that you don't need to add in. Uh, I mean, you can add it. I actually added more sugar also because I have a very, I like something very sweet. So it said, when it says fresh, when it says one large mango, and then it says um, uh, sugar, well, you already have that part done for you. So you, all you need to do is add in the water and the yogurt and the ice. So that's that's an easy way to do it. And you can uh, you can just blend it up and put it in the fridge and you know make it like two or three days ahead of
that this is the most basic one. It's just milk and it's um, water and a tea bag. And you can use any kind of tea bag and sugar. And I put cardamom in there too. So just to make it a little flavor. And I have iced coffee. One of my friends, she says she drinks this every morning now, iced coffee. So you don't need to go to Starbucks. You can just drink it right here. This is, it is a very popular drink in India. So it might not be Indian, but in India it's a very popular drink. It, it, well, the reason why it is Indian is because in the southern part of India they have a lot of coffee. And that's why it's very popular to have that, their iced coffee. And then um, this Indian cappuccino. A cappuccino is uh, basically like a, a coffee drink with milk in it. And my mom, she makes it at her party. And it's really good. You don't need a cappuccino machine to get that from. Basically, what she was doing is you buy instant coffee grains. That's the hardest part is just beating them. You, just, you have to uh, beat it with water. You just keep, you really gotta work out on your arm. You just keep beating it, beating it, beating it, beating it. And that dark coffee grains is gonna turn into this beautiful, kind of like the color of your skirt right there. That color, cream, almost looks like a mousse, that color. And so you boil the milk and the water and you add a dollop of that in there. And then what you do is if you pour the milk like so here's one glass. Here's your glass and here's your pot. Don't do it like this. Do it like this. So don't miss, you know? So do it like that. And that's when you get that frothy foam at the top. You don't need to have a fancy cappuccino machine to do that. But the trick is when you're making that mousse, you're making that coffee mousse, you can't just put all the water in there and all the coffee you want. You have to do it like drop by a drop or half a teaspoon by half a teaspoon or whatever I've said in here. You have to be a little patient on that. But once you do that, the results are really, and I'm not a coffee drinker, but I love this because it's very sweet and rich and creamy. Um, and then these are the desserts. Oh, so this dessert right here is a creamy, this is a carrot dessert, so you can actually feel good about it. <laughs> it's made with vegetables. And if you've noticed, all of our desserts have milk in them. If that's not the case with all Indian recipes, they just top it with all Indian desserts, it just top it to be like that. But, um, you can use, um, like even with the mango you fussy, if you don't want to use regular yogurt or if you have an allergy or something, you can use, you can substitute soy milk or uh, soy yogurt for all of the recipes. So the, this this one you see at restaurants a lot. Um, the difference between restaurant, this is called gajar the halva. Gajar is carrot, and halva is the whole mixture. In um, restaurant style, it's different than home style. Restaurant style is more oily and uh, you can see like the part of, I mean, it's more, um, a lot more texture. The home style one is a little bit, I know this doesn't sound a good word, but mushy, you know, because it's really cooked down and it's very rich and creamy. So I I, I personally like the rest, the home cooked one rather than the restaurant one. So next time you guys go to an Indian restaurant, if you don't want to try it, just take a look at the Gajra Gahalba and see. They might have it at the buffet. And you might have seen these at Indian restaurants, Gulab Jamun. My husband calls these, um, donuts and pancake syrup. <laughs> 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 Which is so somewhat accurate, actually, you know. Uh, the pancake syrup is basically a sugar and water mixture with cardamom, and it has a rose essence in there. And by the way, if anyone needs to go at any time, if they want me to sign the book, let me know. You know, I don't mind, like, just taking a break. So, um, so um, gulab, this is called gulab jamun. Gulab is rose. And jamun is a type of Indian root. And so that looks like this ball. And the reason why they say rose is because the cardamom, um, the, the simple sugar, I mean the simple syrup, which is sugar and water and cardamom flavor, it has some rose essence in there, just a drop of that. So they do, that's where you get that rosy taste. That, that's what gulab jamun is all about. And the shortcut to make this, I have the recipe to make this from completely scratch dough, but my mom uses, um, you know, this cook the pancake mix. It's so easy. So you <laughs> take a biscuit pancake mix, that, that one, and you mix it with a little bit of non-fat dry milk, you know that carnation powder, that milk, and then you make a dough, and then you make the balls, and you deep fry them. That's the, like, the trickiest part, because the dough gets kind of sticky. You just have to keep washing your hands, make your hands clean, and then you make the balls, and then you deep fry them, and then you just let them sit in the, in the syrup, that's the hardest part because it takes about like two, three hours for it to just sit there and soak up. So I'm like waiting to eat them. Otherwise, you know, they won't get the syrup in the middle. And so you want to make sure that they're completely absorbed with the syrup. And um, if you've ever had 
Raskula or Rasma. Remember I was talking about those cheese balls right here? These ones right here? And Rasmalai is, let me show you, Rasmalai. Oh, I didn't say that. They have a very unique um, taste to them right here. And what it is is it's, um, it has an, an essence. Essences are kind of like edible perfumes. And like you have rose essence, you know, they're kind of like extracts, vanilla extract, almond extract. So in any cooking, we have these essences. And uh, it's called K-E-W-R-A. So it's pronounced K-E-W-R-A uh, or Q-E-W-R-A. It's just a different person to you how you pronounce it. And um, I talk about it in the beginning in, in ingredients. It's this flower called a screw pine, and it's the essence from that flower. And you buy the little bottles. They're only a dollar. You, you can get them at Fiesta. You see them at Fiesta in the Indian section, or you can go to the Indian store and get them. And they last, I've had mine for probably five years in the fridge, because you only use a drop at a time or a few drops. Because if you put in too much, your whole dish is going to be bitter. You don't want it to be overtaken. But it's, it's an edible perfume, and it's natural. And it's just if you have an opportunity, um, it would be nice to smell all those. It's, it's really amazing. That's what gives those dishes a distinct flavor also. And um, here, we have here back there. Does anyone know what here is? Yes. Kind of like an Indian version of rice pudding. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. The rice pudding is popular all over the world. In, in um, I think it's Mexico. I don't know. Are you, are you familiar with the Mexico? Atole. Mm -hmm. Atole de arroz. Okay, or arroz con leche, yeah. something like that, yeah. And then um, there is one in Greece. Anyone in Greece? And they call it um, riso gallo over there in Greece. I don't know if I pronounced it right. But basically, it's rice pudding. It's rice that's cooked in milk and a little bit of water, and you add a little bit of half and half in there, and some cardamom pods and sugar. Yeah, cardamom. Yeah. 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 And, and um, and then you get this really nice, you know, um, creamy rice pudding. So sometimes in the restaurants it's very thin and watery because they want to spread it out more, you know, and they want more people to have it. But I don't like that thin and watery one. Mine is very thick and clumpy almost. Is it customary to put those pistachios or that on it? You, um, for I put um, almonds on there, like the blanched, blanched and slivered almonds. Uh, I put that in there. The pistachios are more common on cold tea. Cold tea is an Indian ice cream. So I have a picture of that right here. And um, what it, my baby she loves cold tea. <laughs> my mom makes it for her. It's so easy to make. And, and when you're making desserts, always use whole milk. Do not use reduced fat milk. This is a dessert. You cannot, you know, ruin your dessert. And, <laughs> and ruin your body. You just, okay, just portion control. My mom is a dietitian, so. If you notice, you might think, oh, these portions are small. They're not really small. They're standard portions. We're probably used to seeing such huge portions, you know? So uh, basically, use whole milk so you get that creamy consistency. You just take milk, like um, I say two cups of milk. It takes 15 minutes to boil it down. You have one cup, just keep boiling and simmering it. It reduces down, it's thickening it up. You're basically evaporating the water out of the milk and thickening it. That's, it's similar as evaporated milk that you buy in a can. But I don't like to use those canned ones because they have a metallic taste to me. And then you add in sugar. So you're just, all you're doing is you're boiling that milk, you're reducing it, you're putting some cardamom, you're gonna put the cardamom in there for the flavor, and then you're adding sugar in there. So now you've got uh, condensed milk. So you know you have those evaporated, the cans evaporated milk, and you have condensed milk. Condensed milk is evaporated milk that has sugar added in there. But I don't like the, the ones from the and it really is not too much trouble to make this. And then you freeze it. You can freeze it in popsicle molds. You can freeze it in ice cube trays. I freeze it, froze it in an ice cube tray one time. And then I just, um, you know, you just take it out and you sprinkle crushed pistachios on top. It's very easy and it's very elegant. I mean, it is, and one thing to know about all of my recipes, especially if it's the first time making them, follow them as they are. Don't double or triple them or try to have them first. And I don't have gigantic quantities. So if you don't like it, you're not going to waste so much food. Um, the reason why is because I made every effort to make sure that the recipe is so clear. So I'm giving you the cook time and the description. So I'll say, you know, cook it until the onion is brown, which takes about five minutes. But if you double the recipe, it's not going to take five minutes. It's going to take more time. So that might throw you off a bit. And also with things like rice, rice is a tricky thing. Indian rice is not like Asian rice, it's not sticky, it's flaky, and we use long grain basmati rice. And um, so what you want to do is if you double rice, rice is tricky. The more rice you have in the 
pot, the more water you have in the pot, the longer it's going to take to cook, the longer it sits in that hot, hot water is going to get mushy and sticky. You don't want that. So with Indian rice, we usually cook with basmati rice, which is a fragrant long grain rice. But you can use any long grain white rice if you don't like that flavor of basmati rice. And um, it's, the rule is one cup of rice, two cups of water. So you just double, double water. And uh, so like with this ice cream, I'm saying one, start with two cups of milk. If you're gonna do like, and I learned this the hard way, if you're gonna say, oh, well, I need to make like, go ahead. Um, with, the, with the rice cream, is there a particular type of rice cream you want? No, with the rice cream, well, I did say basmati rice because you want, I want to say best one. So there are some dishes where I say, I'll say use basmati or any long uh, grain white rice, okay? But there's some dishes like biryani, which is a uh, Indian rice dish, or this one, I won't say, or any long grain, because you still can, but you're gonna lose, you know, these are dishes that really are unique and you wanna leave them as they are. You don't wanna, you know, take away the, the basic flavor, what the dish is known for, so. Um, and then, um, but, and you, you know, you can try it, and if you don't see that much of a difference in taste, then you can go ahead and use your other rice, yeah, whatever rice that you like to use. Um, but on the, the milk, uh, when I boil milk, so I was making ice cream for a whole bunch of people, and I did it the long way. What I did was I I doubled, tripled the recipe, and then it takes forever to it takes forever for it to come to a boil. So the longer the milk is sitting there, then you're gonna have it's gonna start gonna get yellow and creamy color, and you don't want that for this dish. It's not gonna look right. It takes forever. Honestly, it's quicker just to make multiple pots. So I'll have like three pots going and just doing all the same. I know it's more dishes, but it's, 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 it's quicker. Just do it like that. And let's do it. I have a question. Yes. I wanted to make a karma, a vegetable karma one time. Uh -huh. The sauce was so involved. Yes, I don't have karma in my book. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it seemed like there were like a hundred ingredients in that sauce. Yeah, it's like a restaurant style dish. And okay. I, I mean, um, it has cream in there and it has like a million other ingredients in there and I mean to me it's, it's okay it's just like with that cream it kind of you do get the flavor of all those ingredients but it's not something to me that stands out whereas chicken tikka masala I wanted that in there you know I really like that but are you looking for a recipe or are you just well I'm, I'm vegetarian so can oh. can like the chicken and lamb yes you substitute sure so I have like chicken biryani right here and so I don't I personally don't like a lot of meat my husband loves meat this has um, about 80 of the 100 recipes are vegetarian recipes in here. And my baby, I've kept vegetarian right now. Today I made, uh, made a vegetable rice pilaf for her, which is like it, and she's gonna take it to school tomorrow. So it's basically like a Indian um, fried rice, vegetable fried rice. And uh, what you, well, I was gonna tell you real quick, on the chicken biryani, I made it once, instead of chicken, I used potatoes instead. Okay. And I just substituted potatoes in front of it instead of chicken. And um, so the rice, uh, what I did was you take rice, and my basic everyday rice that I like, I like rice with cumin and peas. But from the southern part of India, because their food is so fiery hot, they just use plain rice, like steamed rice. And I have that recipe in here too. But I just, I, I like a little bit more flavor in, in my rice. And so for her, I made this vegetable fried rice. It has like carrots, peas, cauliflower, and today I tried something different. I put in frozen, I bought a bag of frozen cauliflower and broccoli mix. So I put broccoli in there too, carrots, onion, and all you do is you take some, it's really quick. The, the longest time that took me for this recipe was peeling the carrots and, and you know, cutting them up in the, in the potato. You just take a pan and you put some oil in there, and then you take an onion and slice it into half moons. So you want to brown the onion up. This, this, this is like the garnish. You don't want to get it that brown. That they just did it. That's traditional in Indian cuisine, like in restaurants, they'll um, or whenever they serve rice. But this kind of rice, they'll put this crispy brown garnish on there. But if you can, if you look at the picture closely, there's you know onions in there that are not that brown, and that's how you actually get the rice has that brownish tinge to it, also in this dish. And so I put in um, black. This one is a little bit more involved in terms of, in terms of the spices, but you just dump them all in at one time, and they're all easy to find spices like cinnamon stick, cumin seeds, the bay leaf, cardamom pods, and black peppercorns. So I just let them cook with the onions. 
dump in all my vegetables. I dump in the frozen ones and the fresh ones just together. Put in the rice, the water, the salt, and let it boil, and in eight minutes it's done. Indian rice does not take that long to cook. It just about takes minutes. You don't want to overcook rice. Um, and, well, the rice part takes eight minutes. The vegetables and the onions will take about like another five or six minutes. So, but the total cook time is 25 minutes on this on this uh, dish. You know, just because it takes a little bit of time, you gotta wait for the oil to heat up. That's why. But it's not something that I made that today. I made a, a lentil stew and I made a pea and mushroom, uh, mushroom and pea curry. And I did that all with you know my baby and distractions and everything, and she helped me also. So it's not something that you have to have your full concentration on. And, I, and I'm not like, you know, I, I know I cook these maybe more than you might think, oh, but you cook them every day. I don't cook every single day. So I cook once a week. And today was my day of cooking. And that's what my mom does too. She cooks on the weekend. Because when you come home from work, you're not gonna cook from scratch. You're gonna have your food ready from the fridge. And so like tomorrow for dinner, you know, I know I can take out the pea mushroom, mushroom and pea curry. I can Rice from the fridge, and in Indian food, the long, you know, even when it sits in the fridge, the flavors develop more. So it's not leftovers; it's actually still doing its thing. And for every recipe, I have the refrigerator life, the freezer life, and the reheating method. So uh, you can make, you can even freeze rice. You can put it in individual serving sizes, put it in the freezer. And in the morning, what you can do is, if you have a lot of good things in the freezer, stick it in the fridge. It'll thaw during the day and then warm it up when you come home. So you don't have to worry, you know, waste, spend time thawing it. If you forget to put it in the fridge, I still have directions on how to do it. And with rice and vegetable dishes, almost all dishes, you can heat them up in the microwave and it'll be fine. But with eggs and meat and seafood, I do recommend putting it on the stove top, like in a pan or in a skillet to warm it up, because you don't want to mess up the texture and the taste of that. So, that's like, I mean, this is like, that's why I want to make sure the book was practical because when you come home, I mean, sure, you can whip up a dinner, you know, in like 45 minutes, but that's 45 minutes of doing prep work and doing all this, you know, you're tired. You just want to have it ready to take out, warmed up, and eat. So, um, and a typical Indian dinner is, and we don't eat Indian food every day, you know, we, like my favorite cuisines are Mexican. Italian, so, <laughs> but, and Indian, so, but, um, like, uh, Indian, like, a typical, a very easy dinner is just rice with cumin and peas, one protein, that can be either, like, black-eyed peas or lentils, or a lentil <coughs> dish, and one vegetable dish, and a side of yogurt or a side of bread dough. So you have your rice, and then you have your meat dish, it could be a meat, it could be a seafood, it could be an egg dish, and then a vegetable dish. And then your, um, and then you have your um, yogurt. So that's like all four food groups you have. You have the dairy, you have the bread, and the rice, and then you have vegetables, and then you have protein. You can also add um, like the actual bread. So like growing up, uh, we would have, you know, from the southern part of India, it's rice as a staple. Rice is very easy, but my mom, um, she made um, chapatis, and chapatis are also known as rotis. That's the everyday bread. Not non, non, because remember I was talking about non, you have to have that special oven. So let me just show you. This is, this is the everyday bread that we eat. Okay. And, the, and this is a picture of my grandmother's house. I was visiting her in India when I was a little kid, and that's her tandoor. We're making the, uh, rotis in there, non in there. This is what non, this is the restaurant. This is my version of non. But, um, what I was saying is, so my mom actually found out, like, after, so growing up, you know, she would, like, for all four of us, for my dad and for uh, her and my brother and me, she would make these every day, you know, she would, like, make, she would have the dough, she would roll it out and make it. And now, she found out something, she doesn't do that anymore, and she gets Mexican wheat tortillas from the store, <laughs> and heats them up on the gas or on the skillet, and they puff up, and they just, and that's what I do. It just doesn't make sense to do all that. You have know, <laughs> this flour spread everywhere, it's like not spilled all over, it's just done for you. So so that can be your meal. You know, you can just have the, um, I have. I always have like Mexican tortillas. I actually don't like wheat that much, I like the white ones, which are more similar. Not is made from white flour, not wheat flour. So I have those, and then I'll eat like the, so like for example, like tonight, I'll have like the Mexican tortillas, and and what I'll do is I'll just like heat that up on a gas stove and like my gas flame, I'll just flip it and then have pea and mushroom curry and um, and then I can have my lentil dish that I have and some yogurt and that's, that's a complete balanced meal. So, are there any other questions? My favorite
it's good, but adding the curry leaves just takes it to a whole nother level. So uh, that's good. And and this book is not just for beginners. It's for everybody. My mom uses this book to make dosas, which are rice and lentil paste. That's what my, they're from the southern part of India. That's my in-laws recipe because she doesn't know what it makes now. So she, she flips over the book and she's like, oh wow, I'm so glad you standardized these recipes and I can, this rice and lentil paste right here. So you, you make the batter and you spread it out and then you can roll it up and you can even put potatoes in there. So my mom uses this book. So a, any level, any cooker, any level. share your cooking pictures on there.